while you're burning fat in this ketogenic state with insulin low, your body also goes into a muscle sparing state. Believe this. Believe this. This is, this is scientific stuff. This is not me just making it up. You can do your own research. Your body increases growth hormone as a result of the fasting state. And this makes perfect sense to me because our body is not stupid. If there's no food, your body's not going to break down the mechanism by which you're going to go get food, which is your muscles, right? So you don't have food, but you've got body fat. And this is, this is how dumb some of our dogma is. Your body wants to preserve muscle. Your body doesn't want to get rid of muscle when you're not eating. Your body, your body wants to use up the stored energy, your body fat, for energy, the stored energy, not the, the mechanical means by which you go and, and get food. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that you, I love the fact that you're an athlete too, you know, cause I, when I started the prolonged fast, I was trying to find different guys just to get their, their take on it. And you're yeah. right. A lot of them are, are hippies. And the fact yeah. that you lift, the fact that you're a power lifter, the fact that you're a jack dude, and you're fasting to me that it clicked instantly. Like I resonated with you right away. Thanks, so when man. someone's a, uh, someone's an athlete, uh, and you know, they want, they want to lose muscle. They want to maintain their performance. How do you change the fasting for that? Yeah. So there's a little, there's different routines there. So now it depends if it's, it depends what their priority is, right? If they're like, if they're a really fat guy and they're trying to cut weight, I feel one of the best protocols, I still always make them do that longer fast at the start, okay? To face that, like, you know, I still make them do the 72 hours and then I just won't mm -hmm. make them lift that three days, okay? But a good routine for the athletes that are, especially um, intense athletes, like we're talking sprinters, uh, people that lift weights, you know, anything that's high intensity, um, usually what I have been doing is breakfast only. I've actually been really pushing this again. Now I went away from eating at night. I've done a whole bunch of research now on circadian rhythms and shit. And, and with my own experience, I had to go back to a morning refeeding routine because I was doing 48s recently. And then I realized what the fuck am I doing eating at night? And it just felt better. And that's exactly what I was doing when I started fasting was eating breakfast in the morning. So essentially that's what I have them do. They need a breakfast and watch the calorie count. And depending how tight they want to get with the calories, they need it a little closer to their workout. So I actually have a fella right now, like my same mentor, that was one thing. Like he's done everything and he's cutting for worlds right now. He's actually in the master's division and worlds. He's, I think, I think uh, he's 47 now. And he was cutting. We were basically, he, normally you'd cut on like a meal a day and eat strict zero carb. And then you might have like this, this carb loading refeed on like say Sunday, but that was not optimal. You just, you can, you can cut for sure and keep most of your strength, but it's not as good as eating breakfast and eating carbs every day. And then you, because it's all about the intensity in the gym, because as soon as you eat that little bit of carb intensity in the gym is what counts. People don't understand that you do not need to eat a meal after you work out. You already have enough amino acids in your system and everything from that morning meal that you are in recovery right away. And I proved it the other day. I did some blood testing. I've done lots of blood testing experiments, right? And I ate a breakfast that was probably maintenance calories. And 12 hours later, my blood sugars were still like a full point higher. So if we're talking blood sugars measured in millimoles per liter, my fasted blood sugars at 12 hours would normally be probably about 4.1. And if I'm really fasted at 24 hours, like in ketosis fasted, I'd be like mid threes. And my blood sugar 12 hours after eating that meal after training was like 5.2. So you're still like, you're anabolic all day. It's unbelievable. Like soon as you eat them, you always, it's always better to front load your food. You're anabolic all day long. And then all you do is you, you know, drink some salt water, go to bed on like basically an empty stomach. But you're, you're not even hungry anyway because it depends on how much you've eaten in the morning. But you go to bed on an empty stomach and you wake up. And when you, right before you wake up, about two hours before you wake up, your body temperature will actually increase and your metabolism increases and your cortisol is high when you wake up and your insulin sensitivity is at its peak. And that is exactly when you should be eating your breakfast. Exactly when you should be eating. If you're eating one meal a day on a cut, if you're an athlete, that's exactly when you should be eating it. And then throughout the day, your alertness and everything's excellent. And then 
as nighttime comes, um, melatonin will increase again. Like, so it decreases in the morning when you're about to wake up because melatonin makes you sleepy. And then it'll increase right before you go to bed. And that'll make you sleepy again before bed. And your body cools down naturally. If, if, if everything's on point, like with your circadian rhythm, most people, like if they work shift work and shit, and you know, you need light, right? You need the light patterns to be like consistent every day. So anyway, you would go to sleep, empty stomach, you know, you're burning pure body fat at night then. You're, you're not, why would, you, why would you load up food at night, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's like you're dumping food on a tiny little fire when you could be dumping food on this massive fire in the morning. Because I did an analogy about this. Let's say if you had like a, a huge fire on one side of you and on the other side you had like this little candle burning, okay? So if you had like a, like a barrel of diesel, and you dump it on the big fire, which would represent how you are in the morning, like with your metabolism being cranked in the morning, you dump that big barrel of deals on that big fire and it's going to burn. Like you're going to burn it up. That's the calories. Like that's your food, right? Now, if you dump that big barrel of diesel on that little flame at night, because your metabolism's taking a dive at night, you're going to spill diesel everywhere. That's like, that represents fat storage, right? You're not going to burn much. And yeah, when you wake up in the morning fast and you try to train the next day, you are going to burn some fat that got stashed. But the number one thing is your intensity is shit. Like in comparison, it's not even comparable. We're talking like 20% more strength if you ate a nice big breakfast compared to eating the same meal at night after you train. Like fasted training, fasted meaning like, you know, a good 16 hours later or so on is just not optimal. Like if you ate a huge breakfast and you're trying to eat maintenance, like say a guy like you, if you were just going like every day was the same, a nice big breakfast, like well-rounded, like, you know, fat protein count, maybe a go about a gram per pound of your body weight and then carbs to make up the rest of the calories and maybe, you know, 120 grams of fat or something. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just eat breakfast. Well, what'll happen is you'll, your strength when you go to train will just be through the roof, through the roof compared to if you would have been eating the night before and you went into that workout fasted so then your intensity is way down so then on a cut on a cut you're never going to maintain as much muscle mass you're not going to be even near as muscle sparing if your intensity is dropping off the face of the earth if that makes sense yeah it absolutely does what do you recommend for people who train in the morning so this so now that obviously Training in the morning, number one, isn't optimal. If it's now, if it's per, if it's performance work like lifting, like I have a buddy who made the Olympics, and I believe it was two thousand and seven in the hundred meter, and he used to he told me that he used to do practice at like uh, I think it was like nine a.m. and so they had to get up at five a.m., which wasn't optimal. They tried they get food in before that. So his coach told them that don't even show up for practice unless you are awake by 5 a.m. Because it takes a good four hours for your muscles to really wake up. Like you're never as strong in the morning as you are at night. So, yeah. but if, if it's absolutely now, if you're doing long distance running, it's a whole other story, right? Now, if they had to, if they absolutely had to weight train in the morning, like sumo wrestlers train in the morning. Now they're not really weight training, but it's more cardio for them, like, but it is explosive, but they have an excuse for that. I'll get into that real quick. I learn a lot from sumo wrestlers, even though they're fat asses. I learned a lot of <laughs> from, wow. from shit, but if somebody had to absolutely train right when they woke up, then you have really no choice, but to eat the evening before. But if I had to make a decision when to eat the evening before, I would definitely eat and give myself at least you know, at least a good four hours to digest the food before bed. 